Good day, everybody, and welcome to the OptiSpice introduction webinar. My name is Brian Tipper. I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing here at OptiWave, and I'll be sitting alongside your host, Jem Bonfil. Before we begin, let's go over a few things. First off, I'll be launching three polls in which we encourage everybody to participate, uh, as the answers are going to be used to help guide Jem through the presentation. Also, if you're present for all three polls, your name will be entered into our $50 uh, gift card draw. The winner will be drawn randomly and posted on our website immediately after the webinar completes. Next thing to note is that we will also have two Q&A periods, first one at the halfway point and the second one at the end. So you can go ahead and ask questions um, during the entire session. However, we're going to stop at those two uh, discrete times and answer all the questions during those periods. Um, we're also not going to be handling questions via the raised hand option in the GoToWebinar interface. So please just use the question section where you actually type out the questions. And in the case where you'd like to keep your questions private, you can always just uh, simply email the questions to support at Optiwave.com and we'll answer you uh, um, in each individual case. Uh, if for some reason we can't answer the questions that you've, uh, you've put into the question section, uh, we will jot them down at the end of the uh, webinar and reply to you via email. Uh, lastly, we'll be recording the webinar and distributing it to all registrants via download link that you'll receive in an email tomorrow at this exact same time. Uh, in order to access the recording, you're going to need your uh, name and email that you used when you registered for this webinar. So let's uh, now begin. I'm going to hand a uh, presentation over to uh, our product manager of Opto Electronics, Jim Bonfil. Uh, hi, Brian. Uh, thanks uh, for the introduction. Um, I am, uh, like Brian said, I'm uh, the product manager of Opto Electronics and I am in charge of developing OptiSpice. Um, so today I'm going to be going over um, the basics of OptiSpice. Okay, one moment, please. All right. Um, so today I'm going to be going over um, the basics of OptiSpice, how you can set up a simulation, uh, and how um, you can look at the results. So um, starting with what is OptiSpice and what it does, um, it is an integrated optoelectronics uh, simulation tool uh, based on modified uh, null analysis. Uh, which is uh, based off uh, regular SPICE. Uh, SPICE is generally used for um, simulating electrical circuits, uh, analog simulation of electrical circuits, and we have built uh, an optical infrastructure on top of uh, regular SPICE. It does a newton raphson iteration, so we can do transient, um, AC, uh, DC, various kinds of simulations with it, and uh, we can do linear and nonlinear simulations. We have models of um, like regular uh, electrical components, uh, resistor, capacitor, inductor, uh, nonlinear electrical components, uh, MOSFETs and BJTs, uh, and various other electrical models. Um, we also have linear and nonlinear optical models. Uh, for example, we have um, lasers, we have uh, photodiodes, um, splitters, joiners, um, optical fiber, and all of our models um, can simulate multi-mode and multi-channel. Um, and we do time and frequency domain simulations. Um, so OptiSpice, is, um, one of its strengths is uh, simulating uh, electro-optic control circuits. Uh, for example, if you want to do um, a thermal simulation of a ring resonator where you control the temperature uh, of the ring resonator and change the refractive index and keep it on and off resonance, um, you can do that with OptiSpice. Um, you can do optical link simulations with parasitic effects, so just the basic uh, optical link where you have um, an electrical circuit driving a laser. Um, the la and we have a nonlinear model for the laser, so you can uh, model nonlinear effects. Uh, then you send your, your optical signal through an optical cable, and on the other side you have the receiver with a photodiode, um, trans transient pin simplifier, limiting amp, um, and you can also do parasitic effects. 
Uh, we can do multi-domain simulations, uh, mainly thermal, optical, and electrical at the same time. Thermal uh, being simulated as an RC circuit usually. Um, and like I said before, we can do optical and electrical. Um, in the future, um, we're working towards um, integration with, integrating with uh, PDKs. So we want to be able to let users model devices based on uh, physical uh, geometry and uh, properties and then put these devices in our simulator. Okay, so a basic introduction to OptiSpice. Um, we have a series of models in our model library, optical, electrical, and optoelectronic. Um, we have two different main connection types, uh, electrical, which is modeled as voltage or current, or we have an optical connection, um, which is represented as a complex number, either, either in polar or Cartesian coordinates. Um, our optical signals are bidirectional by default, um, and we can do multi-mode and multi-channel simulations. Um, I'm also going to be talking about how you build basic circuits in the, uh, in the next few minutes. Um, going over the simulation types, you could do the, uh, a basic operating point simulation, a DC sweep, um, an AC simulation, uh, frequency domain simulation, and the most common for OptiSpice is um, transient simulations. We have um, probes which let you uh, visualize your um, solution and your simulation results, and I'm going to be showing how to use the probes in electrical and optical um, devices. Um, so this is our basic user interface. In a moment, I'm actually going to start uh, building um, circuits and show you how it works uh, in real time. Um, the right side, we have our um, device library. Uh, we have a series of devices that you can drag and drop into your canvas, connect them together. Um, you can see the blue connections are for um, electrical signals. Um, we have a probe. Uh, depending on where you place this probe, um, it will measure different things, and I will talk about it um, when we do our live demo. Um, and then uh, when you double click on the background on the canvas, you can get to the setup screen where you can set up um, your, simu the, your simulation type, um, and you can also do your simulation settings. So if you're doing transient, AC, DC, you can um, do various um, settings. Um, so the basic um, examples I'm going to go through are just a voltage divider for showing an operating point. I'm going to show you how uh, to do a DC sweep using a, a diode IV curve. Um, an RC filter. I'm going to also show you parameter sweep while, I, while I'm doing the RC filter. And then I'm going to use the same circuit to do um, a transient simulation. And I'm going to be filtering um, a transient signal using the RC filter. And then finally, an optical um, link simulation. Um, so actually, here is the voltage, voltage divider. Um, now I'm going to go on to um, our simulator and show you how I do this uh, simulation. Um, like I said earlier, here's our uh, panel, um, library of devices. Um, there are two ways you can uh, filter um, your library. We, you can either select electrical, uh, optoelectronics, where um, you filter uh, the, the results, or you can actually keep uh, this, this selection of all libraries and type the name of the device you're looking for. For example, if I type resistor, it's going to show me all the entries with the resistor name resistor. So let's drag drag and drop uh, one resistor here. Uh, and let me zoom in. Okay. Um, so this is one. Let's drag and drop another one since I'm doing a basic voltage divider. And I'm also going to be using um, a DC source VDC. Now, of course, for all electrical circuits, we need a ground. Take the ground and connect them together. 
as you can see the connections are blue which means it's an electrical connection and let me place one probe so we can look at the results now when you place this probe in the middle it's gonna for an electrical uh, connection it's gonna give us the voltage of that connection if you place this probe on an, a port then it's gonna show you the current so here we're interested in the in the voltage so I'm gonna keep it here you can also rename the connections by right-clicking on the connection and clicking on the name let's say this is our input so I want to call it V in and here is our output I want to call it V out now I'm going to show you and let's let's put maybe we want to put in three volts and these are so here you can uh, when you double click on the resistor like I did um, you can change the device parameters I'm going to go talk into uh, talk about the device parameters in further detail later but let's say this is 50 ohms and the other one is 50 ohms as well so it's a basic voltage divider um, now I'm going to do the simulation settings just double clicking on the background I'm interested in a DC simulation uh, sorry operating point simulation and there's nothing else we need to set for this click OK and when you click analysis run then the simulation oh of course we also need to save the design first before running the simulation I'm just gonna save it on the desktop demo say this is circuit one OP so let's call it operating point circuit now I'm just gonna run the simulation and visualize the results um, that's pretty much it now we have three options um, we want to see the waveform I launch the waveform viewer um, you can see the results and there you go it's a basic voltage divider we the input was three volts we have two resistors you end up with one and a half volts now the next simulation I'm going to be doing is um, a diode IV curve and I'm going to show you how to do um, a DC sweep using the voltage source um, here you can see the results as um, we're sweeping the the uh, voltage and <clears throat> doing um, parameter sweep at the same time you can see the change in uh, the diode current with uh, input voltage now let's do another create another um, design get the DC and get a diode and maybe we, we want to have a resistor after the diode connect them together and of course we need a ground and a probe Um, now this time I'm going to place it on the um, port of the diode so we see the the current and now I'm going to set up a DC simulation I would like to sweep um, um, this uh, input source it's called VDC1 we need the name and then let's start from 0 and go to 1 volt at um, 0 0.01 intervals and here we also need to set in the main we need to set the simulation type to DC Click OK now once we run the simulation we should be able to see um, oh yes we should be able to see the uh, the results uh, of course we need to save first Call it design two. Analysis run, and you can see the IV curve of the diode. 
Now, the third simulation I'm going to show you is um, how um, NAC simulation works, and I'm going to demonstrate that by using a basic um, RC filter. So this is the third type of simulation you can do. Let's create a new design. And save it. Circuit 3. Uh, now, for the AC simulation, you actually need an AC source. So I'm going to get an AC source, AC voltage source. It's called VAC. Um, since we're doing an RC um, filter, I need a resistor and a capacitor. Connect them together very quickly. We also need a ground. And let's look at the output here. OK. Um, now, the first thing we need to make sure that we have an input voltage. Let's put it to 1. Um, I want to put this to 1 ohm. And um, let's see. Um, I'm also going to actually set this, uh, the capacitance as a parameter. And I'm going to also show you how to do a parameter sweep at the same time. Let's say let's call this cat1. And um, now the way you define a sweep parameter is actually in the parameters. You click add and then um, you type the name of the symbol cat1 and the name of the variable cat1. Now we want to make sure that we select sweep because we want to define it as a sweep parameter and um, let's start with 12, uh, 1 uh, picofarad. Okay, now that I created my variable I need to select um, the sweep so let's say we're gonna do um, total num we need to select the total number of sweeps let's say we're gonna do five sweeps and now we need to select the range. So we can e either do a linear or an exponential. I'm going to do a linear range. And I would like to go from um, 1 pico to maybe uh, 50 pico. OK. Now we set our range. Um, now I'm going to set the AC simulation. Um, you can do the, the way you can uh, sweep the frequency in two different uh, ways. One is linear or log scale. Um, I would like to do the log scale one for now. Um, and then let's we need to select the number of points. Let's see, we want a thousand um, between the starting frequency and the stop frequency. Um, one gigahertz to let's say a hundred gigahertz. Okay, now we can run our simulation. Ah, we also need to enable sweep. Let's enable sweep. Okay, now we can run our simulation and look at the results. It ran a bunch of times. Ah, sorry, I forgot to select the AC. There you go. Now we selected AC simulation. Now we can run it again. Now it's going to run a few times, then now you can look at the AC simulation results. Here's the magnitude of various simulation results. Now let's say maybe I want to make sure my filter is, uh, is around um, 25 to, to about 20 gigs. So th 3 dB point is at a 20 gig. So I'm interested in this second one. So it's um, 13.2 picofarads. Now using this I am actually gonna um, do a transient analysis. Now that we have designed our um, filter we can turn this into a transient analysis by just changing the source type. Um, let's use a bit generator. 
it generates the split generator, it lets you generate um, a random uh, bit, sequ bit sequence. You can also uh, manually select um, the sequence of the bits as well. Um, so the only other thing I need to do to turn this into a transient simulation is just change the simulation settings from transient to AC. Uh, sorry, to, from AC to transient. Um, I don't want to do a sweep anymore. And let's change this value to 13.2. Pico ferrets. Now let's do our transient settings. Maybe you want to run only two nanoseconds. Now let's look at the results. As you can see, the RC filter is working fine. Um, so um, now I'm, uh, we're going to take a quick break and uh, we're going to do a poll and then um, I will take a few questions after. Okay, so we just uh, popped up the second poll. If you guys could uh, take a quick look at that and, and uh, answer it uh, for us, that would be great. In the meantime, uh, Jim's just going to look through to see if there's any questions. Um, again, you can ask uh, the questions during the actual session. If you'd rather ask privately, uh, go ahead and email us at supportedoperative.com and we'll respond to you uh, individually. Looks like there's uh, some questions coming in, so I'll give Jim just a couple extra seconds here. Um, the question is if we can export our designs to a PCB tool. Um, the answer is currently um, no, it's not, OptiSpice is not designed uh, for circuit layout. We have another question uh, about um, OptiSpice and OptiSystem. Um, if we can easily port our designs uh, from system to SPICE. Um, OptiSpice and OptiSystem has um, some overlapping features um, and there's also a co-simulation capability actually where you can do your some of the design is in OptiSystem and some of the design in OptiSpice and you can uh, link those designs together. Uh, actually in our um, second or third webinar, I will be talking about uh, the co-simulation capabilities between SPICE and system. Um, so I'll just wait uh, a little bit more if anybody has any questions. Otherwise, I'll um, continue with the rest of the presentation. Okay, um, so the fourth example I'll be doing is I'll show you how to how the uh, optical simulation works in OptiSpice, and again I'll be basing the simulation of the previous uh, transient simulation. I'll show you um, how to set up the la the, ba the laser, um, which is our basic uh, VC laser, fairly forward to set up. How to use the probe when you have an optical uh, signal um, and how to run a transient and look at the results. Okay, so let's let's continue from here. Um, I'm going to drag and drop our base, our most basic um, laser. This laser has two basic modes. One is um, you can control the magnitude and the phase from these two electrically from these two ports, or you can also set up to control the um, the real and imaginary part of the optical output using this laser source. Um, I'm just not going to worry about the the phase right now, so I'm just going to ground the phase node of the laser, and 
my input, I'm going to take my input from the output of the filter. As you can see, um, now with electrical nodes, we can actually have multiple connections into one node. With optical, it's only you can only do connections port to port. Um, I'm going to demonstrate, and actually the user interface will not allow you to do um, multiple connections all at once. So let me demonstrate this using our waveguide. Now this connection is green, which means it's an optical connection. I can rename it if necessary. Um, and let's see, if we try to connect this back here, it, the interface is not going to let us um, because we need to do the connection between two optical ports. Now I'm going to place a basic photodiode on the other side. And um, this photodiode, pretty much, um, if you set the um, responsivity uh, from the model, you can do it from, from here. It's called PD efficiency, photodiode efficiency. You can set the responsivity to anything you want. It's a linear model. It's, gonna, it's just going to take the power and convert it um, to current. Now let's finish the circuit. The way this photodiode is set up, you don't necessarily need to use um, the voltage source. However, I like it just for uh, completeness. Okay. Let's set this to one. Um, now I'm going to show you how the probe works with our electrical signals. Um, sorry, for op our optical signals. Um, so for optical signals, you always need to place the probe on a port. If you place it on a, on a connection, it's going to it's not going to work. It says it's going to tell you that it's an invalid probe. Now we have different ways of uh, looking at the output. One is you can look at the power. Um, like I said, you can look at either forward and or reverse or an input and output signal, optical signals. I'm just interested in the output now. We also have multiple polarizations. You can do X and Y. And when you're looking at the field instead of power, then you can look at either the complex value, um, the magnitude, and the phase, or just the magnitude. Um, let's look at the magnitude now. Um, now I'm going to set up uh, my waveguide um, in the model. Now, the way the models work in OptiSpice is actually um, you have the elements, element properties, which are local to this device. And then you have the model properties, which can be shared between multiple devices. And the way they're shared is based on the model name. If I drag and drop another waveguide, you will see that it, sh it will share um, the model properties. Now let's, let's start adding the model properties here. Um, for the waveguide, we need a refractive index, um, and we need start and add and indices. So let's say N0 is our uh, start index. I'm just going to set it to, to 3. And final is the end index. So it's pretty much the connections uh, from um, the waveguide to, uh, to the next waveguide or the photodiode. And then um, the in, of course, we also need to set the refractive index of the waveguide. Um, let's, let's say they're the same in this case. We can also set the attenuation. Let's say 0 0.5. And we also need to set the length of this device. Um, the length in this case is in microns. So I'm going to put maybe 5,000. It's a long one. Um, this waveguide is going to simulate the delay, the loss, and the attenuation, the loss and the attenuation delay, and the phase shift 
of the signal coming out from the um, laser. And you can see, because the names are the same, they are sharing their parameters. If I change the name, then I'm going to end up with a blank model. Then you can customize this model however you want. Let's, okay, now let's run our simulation. Now let's, okay, maybe place a probe at the output so we see what's coming out. Okay, now we can run our simulation. and look at the results. Now the first thing you notice is now we have a channel. We can see the wavelength, um, that's 1552, and now we have the output of the laser, um, and we, we concatenate the, the output such that you can um, see, you can see various uh, results in one, and you know what's going on with your system. Um, you can also filter these results. Let's see, maybe I just want to output, see the output of any device. So I just, if I type out, then it's going to give me the output. I can also filter based on um, the name of the device. Let's say, um, the bit gen. We have a bit generator. Okay. Um, let's try another one. Let's do a laser. There we go. We get the laser. Um, now let's see, um, this is the output from the laser, now let's see what we get from our, um, and the output of the <clears throat> photodiode. You can see there's a bit of a delay, a loss, there's a bit of a delay in the signal, uh, you can see the loss, and actually, um, if, of course, if I and then if I place a probe at the output, we can also see the phase shift. Let's let's place a probe here, and let's look at the fields. And I'm going to show you the change in the phase shift as well. And run the simulation again. Now we have the output of the waveguide. Uh, you can see the phase shift uh, in radians. And um, you can run multi-mode simulations simultaneously. If I had two lasers, maybe let's place another one here. And we can use our joiner. Um, let's say let's set, set the frequency of this laser to some something different. Let's say this is 1550. And I'm going to join these signals into one. And we need to see the output. Okay, so now I have two lasers with two different frequencies that's going through the same waveguide. Let's run the simulation again. Now, of course, we're, once we um, put these signals in the same waveguide and we're using one single diode, we're going to see some interference effects um, at the output. You can see now we have two channels in the simulation. We have, and they're kept in OptiSpice, um, in optical domain, the channels are kept separately, so they don't interfere during um, in the optical domain, but once, you, once it hits um, the photodiode, they do interfere. 
Um, yeah, you can see the interference actually. And you can see the beating effect between two um, channels. Mm, okay. Now it seems like we have a bit, uh, bit more time, so I am also going to show you a very useful feature in LP Spice. I'm going to show you how to, in fact, load um, data from outside. Let's say you have a certain pulse that you want to uh, put into LP Spice, but you can't generate it using our built-in um, sources. So I have a setup uh, here. Um, so for this, we're actually going to be using um, two voltage sources. Um, and you can see here, and this is a file input. Um, all, the only thing you need to do is select uh, the file where you have your impulse impulse you want to put in, and the file is actually a basic um, time and uh, voltage series. You can see this is a zero, you start with one, and it goes up. Um, and I'm going to show you an, um, basically the result of the simulation. This is the input. This is the output of the laser. And now we're also changing the magnitude and the phase at the same time. And um, this is what we have received in the photodiode. So we have received the same signal with the phase shift because I had, uh, as you can see, I had the waveguide here um, with the time delay. And you can pretty much um, input any, uh, any type of impulse, any type of pulse train um, you want in Office Spice. Okay, um, that uh, concludes my presentation. Um, now we're going to do one more uh, poll, and then um, I will take more questions after the poll. Okay, so last uh, polls up, guys. Um, please go ahead and answer, and also uh, uh, feel free to register for the uh, the remainder of the Opti Spice uh, webinars that are coming up in the next uh, four days. Uh, you can go to the uh, the website just optimum.com, and uh, the first slide that you'll see will be the uh, webinar week. Uh, go ahead and click there, and you'll see all the webinars listed. You'll also see the um, PDF for the qualified uh, users that are in the draw. And uh, the winner of the $50 gift card should be announced around 2 p.m. today, so Eastern Standard Time. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and check out the website for that, that information. I'll let Jem just uh, read through the uh, any remain, remaining uh, questions, and uh, he'll make a decision on which ones he'd like to answer now and which ones we can answer afterwards. Okay, um, we have one question uh, regarding dispersion effects uh, in OptiSpice. Yes, actually, we have um, a single mode fiber um, that uses a uh, split step Fourier method with um, nonlinear Schrodinger's equation, uh, which can actually model dispersion effects in, in the waveguide. I'll wait um, for a couple of more minutes if um, anybody has any other questions. Um, you can always uh, email all our questions um, to our support. Okay, well, um, thanks for joining me at this webinar. Um, I'll hand off uh, to Brian now. Have a good okay, day. Okay, everybody. Have a, a good day, and uh, thank you for coming. Feel free to register for as many uh, other sessions as you'd like.